When a wealthy man came to our house to propose marriage, my twin brother suddenly pushed me out the door. At that moment, I knew he had also been reborn. In his past life, he went home with the rich couple, only to find that their daughter weighed a whopping 300 pounds, and she had a bad temper, treating him with nothing but physical abuse or harsh words. Despite all this, he swallowed his pride and endured it all for the sake of a luxurious lifestyle. However, in just a few years, their fortune dwindled to nothing. When his infidelity was discovered by his heavyweight wife, she, in her fury, took a knife to his manhood, leaving him less than a man. While all this was happening, I married an award-winning actress and became the true victor in life. He couldn't bear his impoverished life and mangled body, and in his despair, he dragged me along to jump off a building. Now that he has returned to the past too, he handed over the position of the wealthy son-in-law to me. Dad, Mom, I'm still young and my main task is to study. I don't want to think about marriage too early. I opened my eyes to the sound of Makoto's voice. I had somehow returned to the day when the rich man came to propose. Wealthy Mike Murphy hastened to respond. Once you move in with us, your aunt and uncle will provide you with better learning resources. It won't affect your studies. He is the richest man in Riverbend City, yet he only has one daughter. My grandfather saved his life ten years ago, and as an act of gratitude, our families decided to bond through marriage. Today, as Makoto and I are just in junior high, he is keen on settling on a future son-in-law to bring home and personally mentor. His intentions to groom the future son-in-law as an heir are clear. My mother quickly chimed in as well. Absolutely, Makoto, Uncle Mike will arrange the best tutors for you and his daughter Willow. You don't have to worry about your studies. We're sending you to the Murphy house so you can get used to the environment ahead of time, considering the size of the Murphy estate. Makoto turned to look at me, a hint of an imperceptible smile in his eyes. Why not let my brother go? My mother thought it was a good opportunity, worried that I might take advantage of it. Becoming anxious, she hurriedly tried to persuade Makoto. You have a good demeanor, more sensible than your brother. I am not sure your brother won't make trouble in another's home. Makoto, listen to your mother, this is a golden opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. It's always been like this at my home, even though Makoto and I are twins, he's always more important, receives more love. It was like this in my past life, and naturally, it continues in this life. However, this time Makoto didn't listen to her and frowned, dropping the words. I'm not going. After saying this, he got up and went back to his room. This kid. My mom sighed, and in the end, she had no choice but to let me go with the Murphy couple. Makoto has always been smart and knows how to seize opportunities. Yesterday, he was still telling my mom that today he would make a good impression in front of the Murphys to secure his position as the son-in-law of the rich family. My mom couldn't understand why he suddenly changed his mind at the last moment, but I knew why he would pass this great opportunity on to me. Because just like me, Makoto has also been reborn. In his past life, he did his best to impress the wealthy couple and successfully became their son-in-law as he wished. But when he got to the Murphy's house, he found that the Murphy's daughter, Willow, weighed a whopping 330 pounds. For the sake of the Murphy family's wealth, he endured it. After the marriage, he successfully obtained the Murphy family's share, becoming a winner in life. Meanwhile, I was just a freshly graduated poor student, living in the cheapest basement with my girlfriend and starting up a business in New York. However, less than two years after he boasted in front of me, the Murphy family went bankrupt, the Murphy couple went to jail. As a significant shareholder of the company, he was saddled with a huge debt. To repay the debt, he cheated on Willow with a wealthy woman, but he was caught by Willow. In her anger, she mutilated him on the spot making it impossible for him to live a normal life. At this point, my longtime girlfriend had become a leading actress and my career was flourishing. Unable to bear impoverishment and disability and unable to accept the gap between us, he asked me to visit our parents' home together, but he ended up dragging me along with him to commit suicide by jumping from a building. After coming back to life, he relinquished the position of the rich son-in-law to me. He thought he was the only one who had reincarnated. When I was packing to leave the house, he smirked while holding his arm. Bro, being a rich son-in-law is not as easy as you think. Meeting his gaze, I responded somewhat speechlessly. But aren't you the one who doesn't want it? Since we were kids, 
The things you didn't want ended up with me. What can I do? No choice. Who asked our parents to love me more? He shrugged, seemingly gloating a bit. Looking at him, I couldn't help but laugh secretly in my heart. He thought he had switched lives with me, but he didn't know that at the time, I was terminally ill. Even if he hadn't taken me with him to jump off the building, I wouldn't have had long to live. I wondered if he would repeat my life mistakes in this new life. Dear brother, what's the use of reincarnation if you don't have the brains to use it wisely? As soon as I arrived at the Murphy's home, Willow gave me a formidable welcome. Mr. and Mrs. Murphy wanted me to live in the room next to Willow's, but she threw a tantrum. He's a man. I don't want him living next to me. Let him sleep in the basement, as far away from me as possible. Otherwise, I won't feel safe. Darling, you're going to marry Jacob in the future. You two should start getting familiar with each other now. Willow's mother tried to persuade her. However, Willow kicked the table hard, causing all the dishes on the table to shake. She pouted, the layers of flesh on her face piling up, making her look far from innocent and even a bit mature, not at all like a teenage girl. No, I don't like him. I want him to sleep in the basement. Willow was notorious for her bad temper, but it was primarily because she was the only daughter of the Murphys and they spoiled her rotten. Seeing the awkward expressions on the couple's faces, I took the initiative to speak. Uncle Annette, let's listen to Willow. After all, we're still young, and it's appropriate for us to live further apart. Mrs. Murphy nodded with a pleased look on her face. Good boy, your mother said you had a bit of a temper, and I was worried we might upset you. I didn't expect you to be so understanding. I forced a bitter smile and didn't say anything. Of course, my mother would speak ill of me in front of them because she was afraid that I might steal Makoto's opportunity. Makoto and I are twins, but I was born five minutes earlier and weighed two pounds more than him. Makoto was malnourished and underdeveloped, and upon birth, he was immediately taken to the intensive care unit and narrowly escaped death. My mother felt that it was because I had taken all the nutrients from Makoto when we were in her womb, that's why he almost lost his life. She believes that a person's character is formed in the womb, and therefore, I was destined to be selfish, to harm my siblings. And so, my mother detested me, loathed me, and my father, following her feelings, also disliked me. They gave all their attention and love to Makoto. In our house, I felt like an outsider. But I was just a fetus back then, how could a fetus understand its own actions? However, in this life, I finally managed to leave my original family early. Perhaps, I should be thankful for Makoto. The basement was very cold, and sometimes Willow wouldn't even let me eat at the table. When the Murphy couple were not around, she would always look at me with a scornful gaze, and then comment. A dog man who is willing to give up his dignity for money. I just smiled at her without any explanation. I believe that time will always prove a person's character and change other people's views. The results of the middle school entrance examination came out soon. Like in my previous life, I was accepted into the experimental class of a key high school while Makoto only got into a regular one. However, in the last life, Makoto still went to a key high school thanks to the Murphy family's connections, and he, Willow, and I were all placed in the same class. This time, before the start of the school year, my parents brought Makoto to the Murphys, asking them to help Makoto get into the key high school. After all, the Murphys had donated a lot of money to the school, and admission quota was nothing for them. The couple was slightly displeased, but they agreed. After they left, Mr. Murphy spoke somewhat nostalgically. Luckily, Jacob came to our family. Makoto was not even able to get into a key high school. How is he supposed to take over the Murphy's business in the future? Immediately, he turned to me and said, Jacob, before you came to our family, your mother always said that you didn't study as well as Makoto, which made us worried that you wouldn't take your studies seriously. Now that we see how great your grades are, we feel relieved. The Murphy's future is going to be in your and Willow's hands, so you must continue to work hard. I nodded. In my previous life, I had made it into the Economics and Management Department of New York University. Now that I have returned after being reincarnated, high school courses are like child's play to me. At the start of the school year, Makoto and Willow both ended up in my class. Willow and I got out of the car together, but she abruptly slammed the car door and walked briskly away from me. 
This girl was rather challenging. Even after spending the entire summer break living under the same roof, her attitude towards me hadn't softened. All day, Willow didn't speak a word to me, and she didn't wait for me when school was over. However, Makoto came over to gloat. It seems that Miss Murphy doesn't see you as a suitable candidate to marry into the family. I raised an eyebrow at him. I remembered the scene of my first day at school in my previous life. It seemed that Willow wasn't too repulsed by Makoto back then. They even rode home together after school. She was much gentler with Makoto, so why is she treating me this way? I couldn't quite understand, but all I could do was to go with the flow. The next day, David also arrived for reporting. If the Murphy family were wealthy, David's family would be the second wealthiest. His family was a rising star and, due to their involvement in emerging industries, their assets had quickly accumulated in recent years. They even seemed to be on the verge of surpassing the Murphy family. In my previous life, I joined David's family business after graduation, so naturally, I knew this young master, and in some sense, we could even be considered friends. As soon as he saw Willow, he made an exaggerated face. Dead fat pig, you're here too? You! Willow was so angry, she almost broke the pen in her hand. You what you? Just look at yourself. You dared to confess to me in junior high? I remember in my previous life, they had had a fight over this matter. It even got to the point where the principal was alerted. I quickly approached to stop Willow. Willow, don't bother with him. Unexpectedly, Willow actually listened to me and nodded at me without saying much more. This was the first time she had looked at me properly. Oh, so you're the son-in-law of the Murphy family? It's quite impressive that you could marry a porker for money. David has always been mean-spirited and contemptuous towards people. I knew this from my previous life, only this time I didn't expect to be on his opposing side. Everyone is equal. I, unlike you, don't judge people by their appearance. Moreover, this is between Willow and me, none of your business. I retorted, yet at this moment, Makoto ran over to kowtow to David. David, when have you ever been wrong? Brother, no need to pretend in front of me. In my previous life, it's true, I became friends with David in high school, and my later financial freedom was also linked to my joining David's family business after graduation. It seems that Makoto has made up his mind to replicate the life I led in my previous life. Unfortunately, the path I walked in my previous life isn't as easy as it appears. My relationship with David's family was reciprocal. It wasn't that I was merely benefiting from David's help. Even brothers in this era need to settle accounts clearly. Would acting as David's lackey really change one's life? Having been given a second chance at life with so many opportunities, it's a real pity that Makoto can only think of copying and replicate others' lives. I looked at Makoto and shook my head. As long as you're happy. This matter is between us. It has nothing to do with you. Willow seemed to hate Makoto even more than I did. As soon as she saw him approaching, she pulled a face and told him off. Scram, who do you think you are? You're not worthy to act wild in front of me. Then she turned to me. Jacob, let's go. I picked up Willow's backpack and followed her. That's when I realized she had slimmed down quite a bit since we first met. It seemed she was on a diet. The willow from my past life memory never seemed to lose weight, so it was surprising to see her getting into the habit of dieting in this life. Willow seemed incredibly determined to lose weight, eating only one egg a day and spending two hours every morning running in the park. Within just a semester, she had lost over 50 pounds. However, by the end of the term, she entered a plateau phase where no matter how little she ate, her weight remained stable. She began an even more extreme diet, foregoing breakfast entirely and increasing her exercise regimen. I tried to talk her out of it a few times, but she only scoffed at my attempts. One day, during our physical education class, she fainted. I had a bar of chocolate ready and handed it to her. You're dieting too extremely. You should always have some chocolate on hand to provide you with energy. I don't need your concern. She retorted, turning her head away in disdain. If you really want to make a change, you should prepare for a long-term effort. Extreme methods like this harm your physical health and won't help you lose weight quickly. If you're truly determined to succeed, you should follow a rational plan. 
I unwrapped the chocolate and placed it in her mouth. Stop hurting yourself. I'll join you in losing weight. She chewed on the chocolate bar, a faint blush on her cheeks. Despite her discomfort, she managed to mutter. Thank you. I'll be with you from now on during your weight loss journey. Trust me. Even though Willow had a bad attitude towards me, I still admired her. After all, not everyone has the determination to lose weight, and those who strive always shine brightly. Her attitude towards me improved, and I began to accompany her on her weight loss journey. We jogged together in the park in the mornings and ate low-fat meals together in the evenings. To motivate her further, we started a short video account together, recording her diet and weight changes. A lot of netizens joined in, using her posts as a daily punch-in for their own weight loss journeys. By the time sophomore year started, Willow had already lost more than 100 pounds. Although she was still a bit heavier compared to average, her features had become pronounced, making her look quite elegant. In reality, she possessed delicate facial features along with fine and smooth skin. She was a diamond in the rough. In her previous life, she had never managed to lose weight before I died. But in this life, with my assistance, she became better and better. I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. Just as one nurtures a plant, I wish to nurture her in this lifetime. After all, she was going to be my wife, and naturally, I hope to rewrite the tragic script of her life because of me. It seems that in this life, he is hell-bent on replicating my life path. Not only is he protecting my friend, but he's also pursuing my wife. However, Rose had too many suitors, and Makoto did not stand out among them. Despite facing constant setbacks in his pursuit of Rose, his relationship with David became stronger. Whatever David did, he would bring Makoto along, treating him like a brother. In the second half of sophomore year, the school organized a spring outing. In our previous life, Rose disappeared unexpectedly during this trip. It was me who braved the rain and went up the mountain alone to find her. From that moment on, she harbored feelings for me and we started a vague romance. Sure enough, just like in our past life, it started to rain heavily on the day of the spring trip and Rose went missing again. The roadside was filled with broken stones and mud washed down by the heavy rain. The class gathered together. Although there were many boys who pursued Rose on regular days, facing danger now, they stepped back, all choosing to stay and wait for rescue teams to search the mountain. Makoto stood up. I'm going to look for Rose. Then he gave me a glance. Bro, stay here. It's too dangerous. I can go up the mountain to find Rose by myself. Looking at him, so afraid that I might rush up the mountain before him, I found it amusing. I didn't say I was going to look for her. My fiancé is Willow. She's here. Why would I go up the mountain to look for someone else? Seeing me say this, Makoto displayed a satisfied expression, turned around, and set off on his search for Rose. Meanwhile, Willow squinted at me, as if examining something. When I turned to look at her, she averted her gaze. Two hours later, Makoto arrived back at the camp, leading Rose and they were both covered in mud. At that moment, I knew the wheels of fate had started to turn. After this incident, Rose's attitude towards Makoto changed noticeably. In less than two months, Makoto began dating Rose and won her heart. Willow's weight loss was significant. She had lost weight to around 60 kilograms. The number of fans following her on the platform increased more and more, and there were quite a few profits from the videos. Having been reborn, I knew that the future belonged to self-media, so I encouraged her to operate the account properly. This way, if the Murphy family faces a crisis again in the future, there may be new opportunities. She listened to me and became active online, becoming the rich friend of many users. However, the Murphy family was not short of money at the time, so she made the earnings public and donated them all to charity. In our previous life, she was Makoto's wife and I didn't know much about her. But now, I find her to be both resilient and kind-hearted, sparkling in her own unique way. During the break that day, Rose approached me, her expression looking a bit odd. Jacob, I had a dream. In it, you found me on a mountaintop, and we were together. A twitch flickered in the corner of my eye, but I tried hard to keep my face calm. You said it yourself, it's just a dream. No, I've been having this dream over and over again recently, experiencing this part of life. I feel like... 
However, her sentence was cut off by Makoto. What are you doing, Rose? He and David, holding a basketball, walked over from outside. Seeing Rose sitting across me, their faces instantly tightened up. Rose bit her lip. Makoto, I have something to ask Jacob. You can ask me anything. I'm your boyfriend. Makoto domineeringly pulled Rose up, as if afraid of her having too much contact with me. Rose seemed a little upset, and with a cold snort, she returned to her seat. Makoto quickly went over to coax her, but Rose started to give Makoto the cold shoulder. For several days, she ignored him and instead greeted me warmly every time we met. After school one day, Makoto asked me to meet him in the small grove behind the school, saying he had something important to discuss with me. As soon as I walked to the back door, I heard David's voice. That's him. Grab him. Immediately, a few rough-looking young guys ran over and grabbed my shoulders. Bro, I'm sorry we have to talk to you like this. Makoto and David stood together, looking somewhat down at me. Seeing their snobbish demeanor annoyed me, I couldn't help but retort. Just spill it. You guys aren't all that. Stop trying to impress me. Beat him up first. This guy can't say anything nice. David ordered, his eyebrows furrowed, commanding his men to attack me. No matter how strong I had become from my recent workouts with Willow, I was still outnumbered. I couldn't fight back much before I was knocked to the ground. Now, are you ready to talk properly with my brother? David walked over, arms crossed, looking at me with utter disdain. Spitting out a mouthful of bloody saliva, I forced a smile. Speaking of brothers, I am his biological half-brother. If he can treat me like this, how well do you think Makoto could possibly treat you? Bro, I don't want to make things hard for you. It's just that Rose is my girlfriend. You already have Willow. Please don't steal my happiness, okay? Makoto put on a pretentious facade, acting as if I was the one who'd done something wrong first. I laughed scornfully. I've never actively spoken to Rose, not to mention I don't even like her. Don't flatter yourself by thinking everyone wants to steal your woman. Good, you know your place. Makoto is under my protection. Don't think just because you're related to the Murphy family by marriage that I won't lay a finger on you. Our David family will soon step on the Murphy family. Before leaving, David kicked me once more and issued his threat. I nodded, lowering my eyes, not bothering to respond. David is stubborn, easily swayed by rumors, and loves to puff himself up to bully others. In our previous life, although we were friends on the surface and he trusted me, I found it hard to confide in him. We were never on the same path, so it's only natural for us to become adversaries in this life. Who can blame him when he can't distinguish Makoto's sugar-coated bullets? After they left, I waved towards the wall behind me. Come out. Willow hurried over, her eyes welling up with tears at the sight of my bruised face. David, that jerk. I'm going to get back at him for this. I patted her back to soothe her. Don't do anything foolish. You got all that on camera, right? Willow nodded, shaking her phone at me, her gaze filled with worry. Keep a few copies safe. We will be able to use them soon. But please don't treat yourself like this next time. Willow bit her lip, speaking hesitantly. Watching her adorable concern, I couldn't help but tease. What? Are you worried about me? Big idiot. Next time I'm not looking after you. Willow blushed and turned her head away. If I remember correctly, at this stage in my past life, the Murphy family and David's clan were competing over a project. Ultimately, it was David's family that won. Starting from this point, the Murphy family began on a downward spiral, eventually driven to bankruptcy by David's company. When Makoto invited me over, I knew he would bring David. After all, David now treats Makoto as a brother, and he already has a grudge against the Murphy family, so he wouldn't pass up a chance to torment me. So when Makoto invited me, I had Willow hide behind the wall and film everything. Now that I have this video of David bullying me, I'm sure this project won't be awarded to his family anymore. I gave the video to a few bloggers to let the story gather momentum first. Finally, Willow and I used our accounts to clarify the situation. We confirmed that I was indeed the one being hit and that David, on the facade, was doing this over Makoto's girlfriend, but in reality, it was due to the long-standing feud between David's family and the Murphy family, since both families were currently competing for a significant project. 
David certainly didn't think this much when he was beating me. But with the video and my embellished allegations, he could not clear his name even if he had a hundred mouths. Many fans of Willow and I on the internet started to denounce David. As the incident continued to intensify and the negative impact deepened, the investors saw that even the heir to David's family could resort to physical violence over a project, exhibiting blatant schoolyard bullying, and they promptly disqualified David's family from the competition. As a result, the Murphy family successfully secured the project. Well done! Jacob, I believe the Murphy family will do even better and more steadily with your help. Mr. Murphy complimented me with a smile when he heard the news. He then started introducing me to the company, exposing me to the operations and networking. I'm sorry. It's my fault that you got hit. Rose ran up to apologize to me. A trace of sadness was visible in her eyes, her long eyelashes quivering slightly, casting a shadow over her eyelids and making her look pitifully cute. Her beauty was indescribable, but this time, I wouldn't be moved by her. What happened has nothing to do with you. Don't burden yourself about it. I looked at her and replied indifferently. She bit her lip. In my dreams, we are married. The one with Willow Murphy is Makoto. You also said it yourself. It's just a dream. How can you mix it up with reality? I knew she must have suddenly remembered some memories from her past life, but I could only pretend to be ignorant about it. Yes, it's just a dream. She gave a bitter smile, her beautiful face showing a hint of desolation. But I'm obsessed with that dream. I think I might have fallen for you. Get a grip. I have a fiancé, and you are my younger brother's girlfriend. I said without changing my facial expression. I thought that facing my former lover could possibly stir some emotions in me, but at that moment, I realized I had completely become indifferent towards her. I've made peace with her past hurts, and any lingering affection is long gone. Now that I'm healthy, I can start a new life. Yes, in my previous life, she betrayed me more than once. On the surface, we were the perfect newlywed couple, from the campus to the wedding hall. However, behind the scenes, she frequently cheated on me to gain resources, accepting the hidden rules of many directors. I was ignorant about all of this, kept in the dark by her until my body started showing a series of symptoms. It was only when I was diagnosed with HIV in the hospital and, under my questioning in the doctors, she finally admitted everything. I couldn't accept her betrayal, I was devastated, and my health was rapidly deteriorating. Yet, she insisted that she did everything for her career and that I never understood her. Yes, I might not really have understood her. I never imagined that the innocent girl I once knew would go to such lengths for ambition. I found it horrifying and wanted to divorce her. However, my body didn't give me the chance. By the time I was diagnosed, I was already in the late stage of the disease, with rashes all over my body and constant high fevers. It was at this time that Makoto invited me to visit our parents. Thinking that it might be my last chance to see them, I agreed to go home with him. Little did I know, Makoto was planning for both of us to die together. He took me and jumped off the building. She bit her lip once again. Finally, she came up with what seemed like a perfect solution. But, I'm prettier than Willow. We can date secretly and you won't lose anything. It seems that even if a person gets a second chance at life, their nature doesn't really change. She was already rotten to her core. In her previous life, she loved me, but she would betray me for resources. In this life, she could develop a secret relationship with me out of her so-called love. We were never meant for each other. Her love is neither honest nor fervent. She lacks any form of loyalty. I shook my head at her. I'm sorry, not everyone chooses a pretty face. I value loyalty and character more. Just as I picked up my bag to leave the classroom, I saw Willow standing by the doorway. She had been eavesdropping on us, but hadn't yet had the chance to leave. Upon seeing me coming out, Willow wanted to run away. I grabbed her backpack and pulled her into my embrace. Why are you running? There's nothing you shouldn't have heard. Rose is so pretty, don't you feel anything? She asked tenderly. Being pretty can't fill one's stomach. You, my wealthy lady, are better. You can feed me. Besides, you're getting prettier too. Unable to resist her adorable expression, I started to joke with her. 
However, she took it seriously. All right, I'll study hard and become wealthier. I'll treat you to delicious food every day in the future. She had slimmed down to 50 kilograms. Due to regular exercise, she had a well-proportioned figure and a healthy posture. In addition to her height, she already looked like a beauty. I couldn't resist stroking her head. How can you be so adorable? During my time at the Murphy family's company, I proposed some more modern solutions to Murphy's father. Having noticed my business acumen, he entrusted me with several projects and asked me to write proposals in my spare time. I also used this opportunity to remove all the traps in Murphy's path to bankruptcy that I remembered from the past, adjusting the plan so the company could ride the tide of the times. When the early admissions of senior year high school came, both Willows and my grades were good enough to get into New York University, but Makoto could only barely pass and enter a low-end school. Having been given a second chance at life, he only thought about how to be a sycophant and curry favor with the lead actress, but had no idea how to improve himself. He even disdained the high school final exams, which could change his life. The day before the final exams, my mom suddenly called me, saying she was sick and wanted to see me. She asked me to go home with Makoto that night. I remembered that at this point in my past life, she had been fine. I instinctively felt that this was some kind of trick cooked up by Makoto. So I refused her, but she surprisingly dialed up Mr. Murphy directly. Her voice was filled with sorrow. Mr. Murphy, let Jacob take the call. I'm seriously ill. As she wept, she began to cough violently. At that moment, I was having a meal with the Murphy family, and Mr. Murphy passed the phone to me. The call was on loudspeaker, and she sobbed. Jacob, your mom is about to die. Please come to see me tomorrow. It won't delay your exams. You can't just forget about your mom now that you're at the Murphys. Her words put the Murphy family and me at odds. Unable to refuse convincingly, I agreed to her request. After school that evening, Makoto and I went home together. My mom was lying on the bed, looking a bit tired but otherwise seemingly fine. Mom, if you're sick, you should go to the hospital. I said. My mom shook her head and sighed. I'll go to the hospital after you and Makoto finish your exams. Before going to bed, Makoto came into my room and brought me a glass of milk. I declined it and poured it into the trash as soon as he left the room, thinking this was probably his move. However, I never expected that the next morning when I woke up, I couldn't open the door to my room. Someone had locked my door from the outside. I forcefully kicked the door. Mom, open the door! You might as well forget about coming out, brother. I'm off to take the exam. Makoto's voice came through, filled with a hint of delight. I clenched my fists. It seemed he couldn't bear to see me repeat a stellar performance on the university entrance exam, potentially turning my life around. He wanted to ruin my life. Mom, don't let Makoto fool around. I need to take the entrance exam. I pleaded. Jacob, I'm sorry. Makoto wants to marry Willow in your place. Your grades are better than his, and only if you don't have a score this time, if you have to retake the year, will Makoto stand a chance of gaining favor with the Murphy family. My mom said, her voice filled with regret. Have you lost your mind? Do you think the Murphy family only cares about grades? With his grades, it's even hard to say if he could get into an ordinary university. You better open the door now, we're running out of time. I knew my mom favored Makoto, but I never expected she would go so far as to ruin my life for him. Jacob, mom is so sorry. You know Makoto has been frail since childhood. If you hadn't taken so much nutrients while we were in the womb, he wouldn't be like this. You have to make amends for this. I promise after this time, I will treat both of you equally. My mom blamed me for the crime I had committed against Makoto when we were fetuses. I don't need later. I need to take the exam right now. I kicked at the door in frustration. How long are you going to be foolish? Could I have controlled anything when we were fetuses? Moreover, if I really needed to make amends, haven't I been doing so for the 18 years? He eats meat while I only get soup. He gets new clothes every year while I need to make do with hand-me-downs from relatives. Even tutorial books, I have to use his hand-me-downs. What more do I owe him? My mom was still unmoved. 
Be a good boy, Jacob. Let Makoto go to university this time and go with Mr. Murphy's daughter. You can take the exam next year. Anyway, your grades are good, it doesn't matter if you're delayed by a year. I won't be with Makoto. Aunt Jane, you better let Jacob out, or I'm going to call the police. Willow's voice, sounding like a heavenly melody, came through just when I was feeling desperate. She actually came looking for me. Aunt Jane, give me the key, or I'll call the police right now. You and Makoto will be arrested. What you're doing is illegal. Seeing that my mom still didn't move, Willow pulled out her phone and dialed a number. Finally, my mom opened the door, fearing that Makoto would really be taken to the police station. I held onto Willow's hand and glanced at my mom for the last time. Mom, this is the last time I'm calling you that. I've paid back everything I owe you and Makoto. From now on, I will act as if I don't have a mother or a brother like him. I was trembling with rage at my mother, and Willow patted my shoulder to comfort me. How did you find me? I asked her after I had calmed down. I noticed that you had been quiet for a while, so I guessed that Makoto was definitely going to play tricks on you. After all. She thought for a bit, then said outright. Remember that Makoto is not a good person. It's right to cut off ties with him. He will continue to harm you. This lifetime, she hadn't had much contact with Makoto, so I was a little perplexed as to how she knew about Makoto's character. She seemed to sense my confusion and slowly spoke. Jacob, do you believe in rebirth? I do. I nodded at her. After all, I was someone who had been reborn. I was reborn. In my previous life, the person who came to my house was Makoto. He tried to please me for my family's money, but he looked down on me behind my back and even cheated on me. Pain was visible in her eyes. Recalling her fate in her previous life, I felt a twinge of heartache. I took her hand and held her fingers. It's okay, I believe you, don't dwell on painful memories. No, I need to continue. Because of the memories from my previous life, I assumed you were just like Makoto. That's why I was deliberately harsh to you at first. But after getting to know you, I realized you're completely different from him. Jacob. I thought that after everything I went through in my past life, my heart would never be moved again. She looked at me deeply, her eyes filled with intense emotion. But today, when I realized you didn't go to the test site, I was scared. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to take the test, that something happened to you. I think I've fallen for you. I gently touched her cheek. Silly girl, I've also fallen for you. And, I'm also someone who's been reborn. Let's forget about all the pain from our past lives. Loving someone is like tending a flower. In this life, I will make sure you're happy. No wonder she was so guarded towards me when I first got to the Murphys this lifetime, it was completely different from the way she treated Makoto. This girl had been burdened with so much, and now, I feel for her even more. Willow and I were 15 minutes late, barely making it in time to enter the examination hall. Willow and I exchanged glances, smiling at each other before parting ways to our respective exam rooms. The first subject was literature and being 15 minutes late did not impact much. The two days of exams flew by quickly. Willow told her parents about what my mother had done, prompting them to sever ties with her as well. Upon hearing my story, Mrs. Murphy welled up with tears. Jacob, from now on, consider the Murphys as your own home. Although you are our son-in-law, we regard you as our own son. In our hearts, you and Willow are the same. Thank you, Mrs. Murphy. I quickly expressed my gratitude. Call her mom. Willow joked from the side. Thank you, Mom. Mrs. Murphy, laughing, gave me a hug. Good boy. Now our Murphy's family is complete with both a son and a daughter. Both Willow and I got admitted to New York University. As academic overachievers who are in a relationship, we often received interviews from various media. Not to mention, with the fans accumulated from our previous weight loss blogging, we became highly sought-after internet celebrities. The Murphy family's current industry would face severe blows in the future, so we decided to transition our business and start to venture into the Sunrise Industry of the Future, a self-media incubation platform. By the time Willow and I graduated, our parents had already retired to enjoy their life traveling around the world. 
Under the operation of Willow and me, the scale of the Murphy family's assets expanded dozens of times over. Makoto did manage to marry Rose as he wished, but sadly, without my script selection and career planning, she did not become a movie queen. She struggled in the film and television industry for several years, but remained a low-profile actress. It seems she only regained part of her memory, only remembering that it was me who saved her down the mountain, but not the events that followed. Without my assistance, and coupled with Makoto, a brainless strategist offering bad advice, David offended quite a few people. His family went bankrupt quickly. I knew very well that people who bully others, if not properly guided, would cause endless trouble. Willow and I held a wedding of the century. But on the wedding day, Rose made a surprising appearance. She was no longer the image of a star, looking desolate and disheveled. Jacob, you should be marrying me. I've remembered everything. Why didn't you come to find me on the mountain in this life? I ignored her and found the security staff to escort Rose out. But at that moment, a knife plunged into Rose's abdomen. Makoto screamed. You wretch of a woman, you gave me AIDS. I'm dying. It's all because of you. Rose let out a scream, fell to the ground, her eyes filled with sorrow. Makoto, not satisfied, pulled out the knife and stabbed her a few more times. The scene was chaotic with blood spraying all over. I gave Rose one last look, protected Willow, and left the scene. The police quickly apprehended Makoto, but Rose died on the spot despite attempts to save her. Makoto was sentenced to death, but I heard he died from complications of AIDS before the execution date. Because of this incident, Willow and I rescheduled and had our wedding anew. Traces of Makoto and Rose were completely erased from our lives. Regardless of reincarnation, the road of life is walked by oneself. There are no shortcuts. Only those who live their lives earnestly. Fate will never let down anyone who stands firm and strives diligently, and no one can replicate the life of another.